Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today you join us on the, the River Street section of the River Calder, just outside Brighouse, and we've just looked into a half decent fish here. It's going to be a short episode today because we've just come down here for a little bit of a practice for an upcoming match. And this could be one of the better fish that I've hooked all day, this. Let's have a look at what it is. It looks like a little trout this time. But really what we've been after today is the roach and the perch. We've had a little chub as well, but we wanted to film earlier in the session. But because of the, the weather conditions and the rain, we've not been able to get the cameras out. But we decided we thought we'd try and start with the fish and this trout's just taking the bait just in time. So we'll just pop the hook out of him. <laughs> but we thought it'd be interesting to come down here today because of, as of late, the, uh, the cold has had some decent weights out of it in roach and perch and the trout don't seem to have been putting in too much of an appearance. Although we've caught two today, the bulk of the fish that we've had have been little roach and perch and like I say, a little sort of 12 ounce chub as well, which has been nice. Don't think we'll hold him up for camera because they're a bit lively, these trout, but we'll get him straight back. And what we'll hopefully do today is just run you through sort of my plan of attack really today when it comes to practicing on this river. Um, in terms of what, what the river's been throwing up lately, it's, there's been some decent weights of, of uh, roach and perch, sort of double figure bags for quite a few different sections. So although this is one of the tougher sections, I thought I'd give it a go today and just see if we could get a few bites. The sport hasn't been particularly hectic, but I've caught a few fish and probably probably had somewhere between 15 and 20 fish and a nice mixture of sizes as well of the roach and the perch. But as I'm fishing, I'll try and run you through the approach that I'm going for today. In terms of what, what the river's sort of thrown up today, it's, it's been quite low and clear. We've had a bit of rain, so there's a little bit more colour in it. And I thought it'd fish better than it has. Um, but with that in mind, I thought I'd come down here with a, a running line approach. So I've set up a waggler, a stick and a link ledger. just get that cast out. One thing you might be able to see today is just how slow the river's running and one problem that we have had earlier in the session was a downstream wind, quite a strong one, and it really made presenting the bait difficult. When we started and when I was setting up um, for the first sort of half hour we had an upstream wind so I decided to start fishing quite close, well sort of pretty much straight in front of me to a degree with the river barely moving in upstream wind that would have been the best form of presentation but quickly the winds turned and started going downstream so that's made made me have to sort of alter the approach as the course of the day has gone on um, and it's made for some, for some interesting fishing I've had to basically push the fish back down the peg to a point where I can present the bait to them properly and as soon as I've been able to do that I've got quite a few bites again with this this section being so slow and clear a tiny little indication there it's never going to really lend itself to catching huge weights of fish unless there's a little bit more colour in it, which like I say today, there's a tinge, but it's not as, not as coloured as, as I'd have liked ideally. But we're still managing to get a few bites. But crucially, when the water's so clear, and like I say, so slow, you never really seem to string a lot of fish together. You might catch in a spell of sort of three or four, and then they'll start to back off down your peg or move away and spook. So it's quite a difficult river to fish is this. Again, on different days you might be able to put more bait in, but today it's been best off sort of feeding 10 or 15 grains of hemp and sort of four or five maggots every cast. But the way I've had to feed them is, like I say, keep trying to feed further and further downstream to try and push the fish down as, well, that's a bite and a fish on again, as the day's dictated to me. Not a big fish, this one. But interestingly, a lot of the fish I've caught have been right over the feed. Small roach this time. <laughs> that was a bit further down the peg. Well, I was saying the fish have been responding well to the feed, so pretty much within the first half hour of the session, I'd say I'd, I'd pretty much snookered myself by sort of drawing the fish too far up the peg to the point where I couldn't actually present a bait to them properly. So it's been quite a job to get them to move further downstream. But the the link ledge has really come into its own in that aspect to, to point where, well, basically point out where the fish are. I so I was running a, wa a waggler through and it was going through just a little bit too quick because of the wind and then I've chucked a, a link ledger directly over the feed and had sort of four fish in four chucks. So it told me that the fish were there and they were feeding, it just was a case of moving them down the peg to a point where I could catch them on the running, on the, well running the float through. 
In terms of what we've done on the stick float today, it's not been particularly great. I've had one bite, which is a small, small perch, about two ounce. So I sort of neglected that for a little bit of the session and stopped feeding it. Just to sort of focus on this, this waggler line. But what I'm starting to do now is refeed it as the day's drawing on. We've been fishing for probably three or four hours now. But I've decided that I'm going to start feeding it again just on the off chance there's a better perch to be caught there later on. Again, because I'm treating it as a bonus fish line as well, I've decided to put a little bit more bait in that area of the peg and force it a bit more. I'm not going to feed hemp there, I'm just going to feed the maggot. Because I think with the, the pace of the river, with it being so slow, if I feed the hemp and I can't get, I think I risk putting the fish basically in too tight of an area to catch. Again, it can be a problem on this river, as I say, if you, if you show the fish up too close together and then you start catching two or three, then you eventually spook the whole shoal, so it's better to sort of spread the bait out a little bit. Well, that's what I've found anyway. Again, when the river's a bit more coloured, then you can try and concentrate them a bit more, and then even some days you can fish a pole with ground bait. But when it's like this, as I say, spreading the, the, spreading the feed over a decent little area and trying to pick fish off around it on a couple of different methods seems to have been the best way. In terms of the area of the river that I've decided to fish, I've decided to fish, that's a little indication there. I've decided to fish a close in stick float line at about sort of 20 feet from the bank and then about three quarters of the way across, just so I'm not splitting the fish too much. I want to keep the lines as far apart as I can. And equally, we've got a bit of, bit of um, cover over the far bank with a few overhanging trees and whatnot. So I think that does hold a few fish anyway. In terms of the, the tackle that I've decided to set up today, as always with the cold, you, pretty much every peg you'll fish on here, you have to fish really light, and especially since there's been a bit of a, a, resur a resurgence, if you like, of the, the roach and perch over the past couple of years. It's very much a case of fishing light lines, sort of 07, 09 hook lengths, size 20 and 22 hooks and single maggot. I mean, there will be days when you'll be able to get away with bigger hooks sort of cruder tackling, as I say, that's usually when the river's a bit more coloured. I've certainly found today that a 22 on the waggler's been about right and a 20 on the, the link ledger. Both tied to 093 Drennan Suplex fluorocarbon, so nice and light. Again, I've, I could go down as low as sort of 075 like I use on the canals, which I'm sure would get me a few more bites. But there's equally a chance on here of catching a, a decent chub. There's a, a few trout, as you've seen, and there's some really big perch as well, so to biting another fish on. So the last thing you want to be doing is fishing really too light. I seem to be getting away with the hook length that I've got on at the moment, catching small roach and perch. So there's no real point changing, but crucially I've, I've stuck to a, a really nice small size 22 hook. I think you've got to present the bait really nice and natural to them. In terms of the, the rigs on this, I've gone for a three AAA insert waggler dotted right down as per usual and then I've just got four number 10s down the line. Main line 014, day were TDR, so again nice and light, usual sort of waggler setup. Um, and crucially one thing that I'll point out is I've not fished with a swivel today, purely so I can get a nice small dropper near the hook length. Again on some days if it was even clearer and moving even slower I'd go down to fishing 11s down the line. But with the wind today I just want to make sure there's enough shot down the line to catch the flow. Again, just making sure I'm feeding pretty much every cast. Between 10 and 20 grains of, of hemp, and about five or six maggots. And what I've done as well today, which I, I certainly think has helped, is in the maggots I've got pretty much like 95% reds with just a few bronzes as a bigger sort of hook bait option. And every fish I've caught today, there's another one on now, has been on the bronze maggot, this feels like a better fish. Again, just having to be really careful because we're only on a size 22. But it definitely seems now that we've put the cameras on, the wind's died down a little bit. The fishing's just improved. I'm able to present the bait much better. This looks like a nice roach, this. 
that'll be the biggest one of the session that lovely fish to catch on the river and that's a proper roach lovely quality probably about I'd say six to eight ounces that one easily the biggest one of the day As I was saying though, these fish certainly seem to be responding better now that I can present the bait to them properly. I say with that, that downstream wind dying off, I can really control the float 10 times better. And I'm actually running the bait through just at the pace of the river. I've probably got half an inch on the bottom here. Again, this pegs, or this section of the river is really nice because there's very few snags here. And the, the bottom's pretty much uniform, so I've plumbed around really carefully at the start, as per usual. But it means that I can just trip bottom with half an inch or an inch if I need to. And that just seems to be presenting it perfectly. And because of the awkward nature of the peg and the wind, I'm doing something which I'm trying, well, I try to avoid on 90% of occasions when I am river fishing, and that's casting on top of where I'm feeding. Well, I'm ideally what I want to be doing is casting upstream of the feed and running onto the, the feed with the float so the bait's down and everything's presenting itself properly. But I've not been able to do that on this peg today because of the overhanging tree. Again, I couldn't start feeding too far down the peg. purely because of the amount of wind. Just have to get this one out of the way for the boat to go through. Like I was saying, because of the, the overhanging tree, I can't cast as far upstream as I'd like to in terms of running it onto where I'm feeding. But equally, I couldn't feed too much further downstream because of where I'd fed initially. I'd be pretty much splitting the fish then. So what I've had to do is, as I say, progressively get the fish to move down the peg. One thing that's really, really important to consider as well when you are feeding like this on a river, like with anywhere, is having a far bank marker to feed to and picking that as your area. Again, even with the, with the chance of putting on a heavier float, I'm fishing much heavier float than what you'd normally need in these conditions anyway with a three triple A, but I've considered putting a four triple A on. <coughs> But being that the wind's actually been coming down the river and pushing into this near side banking, it had made very little difference. So in that instance, that's when I've gone onto the link ledger, biting another fish on and being rewarded with fish straight away. It's incredible this, before we put the cameras on, the fishing was a lot more difficult. Purely like I say, because of the, the wind, it might just about be able to swing this one. You can see catching a lovely mixture of sizes of roach there. They're all really lightly hooked just in the top lip. So I suspect the river's probably come up a little bit with the rain that we've been having. So I might be fishing just off bottom, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the fishing too much. But again, like I say, with the, the river being so, so slow, so clear, and roach naturally being cagey anyway, that's why I think they're being so lightly hooked and you've got to really consider that when you're dotting your floats down and setting your rigs up. I say the link ledger today I've got on, I've put about five BB on the, on the link, which considering the width of the river, you'd expect that to drag straight away, but I'm also fishing incredibly light, light quiver tip in the rod. And you'd be amazed how delicate the bites are. They might move the, they might move the tip about five mil. So with a traditional carbon tip, you'd never see it. So what I like to use on this, 
this section of river in particular. So I use a Shakespeare Sigma wand with the glass tips. So incredibly fine and I use sort of the medium grade one of the, the three for that. And you'd be amazed as soon as you stop getting bites on the waggly, you chuck out a link. And as I say, I've done it a couple of times today and been rewarded with, with one fish after another. And that downstream wind's just picking up a little bit again, so I might have to go back onto the link. But it's something that you've, that's another bite there, missed that one. Something you've got to be really wary of is that when the wind conditions are difficult, is having that option to set up a link ledger or present a static bait to the fish. Gonna miss that one because there was a bit of a bow in the line downstream. So you can see as soon as I'm casting out, I'm mending the line just before the float lands and then I'm feeding. And you'll also notice what I'm doing is actually I've got the bail arm on because the river's moving so slowly and because of the, the downstream wind that I'm having to deal with, what I don't want to do is have the bail arm open when I'm feeding because at that point you can't quite keep in contact with the, the spool. So by keeping the bail arm on, I just have more control so I know that exactly the amount of line that's gone out, it should be then as straight as it can be to the float. Here's how delicate the bites are as well. And one thing that I will do, if I keep missing bites or the bites become really cagey, again, that's when I'll switch to the link and just offer them a different form of presentation. It's just a case of repeating the process. I don't want to be feeding more than once each cast, if I can avoid it. So I think just feeding to feeding the amount that I'm feeding to every single bite is just about right for this river. But again, with the width of the river and the wind as well, it's also made the bait spread out quite a bit. So I'm, most of the time I'm probably fishing slightly past the feed which again, I suspect that's a bite, another good fish on. I think that's why I've had a couple of better stamped fish and I'm generally getting more bites. Another small roach. But to give you a bit more background on what's happening on the calder at the moment, it's incredible how there's been a real resurgence in the, the league results of roach and dace and perch coming back to feed rather than the match has been won with trout and grayling as they used to be. And there's even been a few chub, I've, like I say, I've caught one today and it's years since I've known them be on this section. So for whatever reason, the crayfish and the trout seem to have done a bit of a disappearing act. Again, I've known it in the past on here, catching just grayling in a session. But equally, they seem to have disappeared as well. So for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but it's great because we're, we're enjoying much more varied sport now. and. The weights have been really good to a variety of methods. Again on here, in particular this peg, I'd say it's a fantastic peg to pole fish when the river's up. If it's got another couple of feet on, I'm sure you could do really well catching on the pole, but I think as well with the stamper fish that, that's present now in some of these sections, generally being of a smaller size, I think whip fishing will start coming back into it as well. So it really is a, becoming a really interesting river to fish in the upper reaches. Again, it used to be a case of more downstream towards Murfield and Dewsbury that you get these roach catches and dace, whereas up here it used to be just trout and grayling, but it's amazing how it's suddenly turned on its head and the roach spot and the, the perch has just really turned on up here. Another little indication there. I think one more cast on the waggler and we'll have a go on the link. So really the colder at the moment is, seems to just be responding well to hemp, hemp and maggots, loose fed and fishing on a, a running line on a float. 
in most cases. But there's been a couple of sections further down where it's, it's much slower than this, where they've had good results on the pole, fishing hemp and tears and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get a bit of practice in for this upcoming match and just try and suss out one or two pegs. Again, I thought we'd come here today because it is generally a much more difficult section of river and I always prefer to, to practice our fish on the, the tougher sections. Just gives you a bit more of an idea and makes you sort of try a few different things. It's quite easy to go to some of the pegs under weirs and things like that and you know exactly what you're going to be setting up. Whereas on here, like I say it could have been a case I've set up a feeder rod today, had a couple of chucks with that but nothing. But that could have been a better method. Again, that might be better when the, uh, the river's up and a bit more coloured. But it's been interesting to experiment with different methods. Like I say I thought the stick had have fished better than it has today. But for whatever reason, there just haven't been the number of fish there. I'm getting lots of small indications now as that waggler's running down the peg. So I'm starting to think that the fish have gone a bit cagey. Again, I've kept pretty much the same feeding routine all day. I started off by putting in a couple of decent pouchfuls of hemp right in front of me, but as I say, that probably cost me, you know, a couple of hours fishing time did that, because I think I, I shoulded the fish up in too tight of an area where I couldn't present a bait to them properly. But since I've been spreading the bait around a bit more, fishing further downstream to combat the wind, the bites have just been much more confident. I've had a much more of them. I'm just going to try running this waggler right down the peg this time. Again, I know full well there's plenty of fish right over the feed, but I just want to see what's if there's anything that's dropped down the peg. Again, on a bit of a practice today like this, I'm not here just to catch a load of fish, I'm here to, to try and suss out a few things. If it turns out the fish want to back away from the feed when I've caught, or whether they want to be right over the feed, little things like that. As it's turned out today, the fish have pretty much been, been sat about five or ten feet downstream of where the feed's been going in, so they've been taking it as soon as it's been hitting the bottom. So that gives me something to think about when I do come back and fish the match that's up, upcoming is if the conditions are similar like this, I know the fish will be directly on the feed, so I need to feed further downstream so I can get better bait presentation, better bait presentation to run onto them, rather than having them, like I say, sat upstream and assuming they're going to back off the feed. Conversely, if the fish are very wary, you don't want to be feeding, I say, miles downstream and then having the fish even further down just to get bites. So I think what I'll do now is chuck out the link and just see if the fish are right over the the fed area. There's a tiny little nip on the maggot there, so those little indications probably were small roach having a go at it, or it could have been better roach that had just been a bit wary. I'll put, the, put that rod to one side and I'll just pick up the link. Before I do that, again, just put in a little bit more bait. Don't need to go mad with it, but I'm covering a nice general area. As I say, that's the link ledger setup that I'm, I'm using today. So I've got a decent hook length. Again, with the pace of the river and the fact it's clear, you can see I've got probably the best part, three, four feet there. And that just means that the, the fish are nowhere near the lead or any of the, the, the sort of cruder tackle. They're all going to be sat near the hook length where I'm just using, like I say, a really nice light B560 size 20 and an 093 hook length. In terms of how I've got that setup, really simple. You can see all the shots on there, so I can balance it just to hold bottom. I've just got a little number 10 stop. You see a twizzled boom of line there, which runs down onto the link. That just makes it a bit tougher and um, just helps kick it away from the, the main line, which is really light. Again, 013. I've just got a little swivel there, so it's running. So there's no resistance to the fish. And then that just comes down to the hook length, which is attached by a, a four turn water knot. So really simple stuff. And the, cru the crux of it is basically having no resistance to the fish. When you do get a bite on this, it's amazing how the tip will move sort of five or ten mil and just sit there as if the fish is just sucked in the bait and they're still sat there unaware that you've seen an indication. Really is a fantastic method to fish. 
So this time I'm just going to gently lob that over where the feed's been going and all the bulk of the feed. Set it on the rest and I'm just watching till the tip bounces back like that. And that's the link on the bottom and I'm just leaving it. So a little bit of a movement there. Because what I want to happen is there to be a nice large bow going back to the, the, the lead basically. So that creates even less resistance. So rather than the fish pulling the lead, they're just pulling that sort of slackish line up to the tip. Again, occasionally if you hook a better fish, you'll get a nice positive drop back bite where they'll actually pick up the link. But most cases I say you're looking for a, an indication where the, the tip will move sort of five or 10 mil, mil and just stay there. Again, with trout, they'll wrap it round a little bit, but a lot of the better fish that I've had today on the link have barely moved it. Again, there's a lot of virtues to the link as well. One of which has been the fact that you do have your hands free to really concentrate on your feeding. So say for example, at the start of a session or when you've had a bit of a quiet spell and you think that running a float through and casting constantly is disturbing the fish. There we go, a little pull round. Ooh, missed that one. When you, like, like I was saying, sorry, when you're casting all the time, making a lot of disturbance with a waggler, if you think the fish have had a bit too much of it and they're backing off, you can just gently plop the link in there. It makes pretty much no disturbance on the, the water. And then you can just focus on feeding without disturbing the fish with a rig. And it's amazing, occasionally, on quite a few uh, sessions that you'll fish it, the link will produce the biggest fish for whatever reason. I think, personally, I think it's down to, in a similar float, in a similar fashion to when you um, flat float fishing on a, a pole, rather than running the float through, the bigger fish tend to respond to a still bait. That was a little indication there. Again, with the link, you'll end up striking at a lot of things because it's so sensitive. So it's actually quite a busy way of fishing compared to what you'd normally think of ledgering. You can be in and out a lot. Fish definitely had a go at that on the, the drop. But as I say, because of the, well, as you can see, the wind's picked up now. Because of the nature of it, with it being ledgering, you can just hold the bait in that one spot. So say, for example, like now, if I was chucking the waggler out, the, uh, the presentation would be really difficult because the downstream wind suddenly picked up. Because I can chuck the link out, it's just as sensitive. But it holds the bait in that one spot right over your feed area. So it can be used in many ways. You could use it to search out the peg, casting sort of features and around your feed area. You might chuck it well downstream or you might cast it upstream to see if the fish are there. But equally, if the fish are tightly shoaled up in one area, rather than having to wait for a waggler to set and run through, you can just keep chucking the link over the top and obviously it gets straight down, presents the bait immediately, plenty of finesse to it, and you can just nail the fish one after another right over your feed area. Again, it's not something you're catching all day because of that, because you'll be pretty much hammering the same spot if that's how you're using it. So then that's when it pays to keep feeding and then just run the float through as a bit of an option. But it means that you're always presenting something dif different to the fish and on difficult days when the fish are being cagey, it can really pay off to do that. So in 90% of cases, when the river's not too pacey, I'll always set up a link ledger. Even if I'm pole fishing at times, I'll set one up. Because you'd be amazed, just that different form of presentation and the finesse of the rig, how many bites it'll actually produce for you. So what I won't tend to do is leave it in for more than sort of two to five minutes. I'll always keep recasting it. As I say, it makes so little disturbance. And because there's not shot, up, shot down the line or a long piece of line running down like you have with a float, it creates very little obstruction to the fish. So you can get away with casting it around quite a bit. But it's a fantastic method just to tell you exactly where you, the main bulk of your feed is sitting. So I mentioned, as I, as I did at the early start of the session, I was feeding in one area and I expected the feed to get, be getting a bit further down the river where the fish would be. 
but I was struggling to present the waggler, so I decided to chuck the link right over where the feed was landing. I had bites straight away, so it can really tell you a lot. If I was just chucking the waggler there, I would just assume that the fish were down the peg and that I wasn't getting the right form of presentation. But by chucking the link over it, I found out that the fish were actually right under where, where I was feeding, so I couldn't get the float down to them quick enough, so therefore I needed to feed further down the peg. And it's little things like that that can make a massive difference. And on these little practice sessions, they're invaluable little bits that you can learn. So I've had that in for a short while now, so I'm just going to chuck it a bit further down the peg and see if that does anything. And the bait's still good to go. Quite a few of the bites as well have come as soon as that, that lead's hit bottom and the, obviously the maggot with just a tiny size 20 hook in it and the resistance to the line, it falls almost like any other maggot that's going down. So with a long hook length like that, you've got plenty of scope to catch on the drop as well. That was an indication. So where I've cast there is just a little bit further downstream than where the feed's going in. And I've had a bite straight away. So when you're casting the link out, it pays to have the, like I've got today, the rod rest right next to me. So I can pick it up straight away really nice and quick. If I'm fishing on a seat box, what I'll tend to do is just have the rod rest in front of me and have the butt of the rod on my knee because the bites can be really quick. Like I say, you're looking for the tiniest of indications most of the time. But it's a fantastic little tool to always have. Again, these sort of rods that I'm using today, they cost next to nothing, about 30, 40 quid. That's how much it set me back. But the amount of fish I've caught on the link ledger, again, some days it'll double double or treble your catch. There was one session that we filmed on the, the Calder and Hebel Canal where we did fish a waggler and a link in that instance on still water. And it was amazing, the stamp of the fish that I was catching on the link ledger was much bigger than what I was getting on the waggler generally. One thing that you can also do with the link is just twitch it along the bottom. Again, that's a fantastic way of catching perch as well. Right, so there's a fish now on the link ledger. Not a big fish, I don't think. But again, just goes to show that it's worth having one of these set up. It's another little roach this time. Again, just when we've had a little bit of a quiet spell with the waggler, chucked the link out and had a small fish, so it's well worth having one of these set up. So we'll get him popped in there and have another cast. And like I say, it just frees up a little bit of time to get some loose feed into the peg. Right, so there's a fish on now on the link. I think we'll probably call this the last one on the link ledger before we try and round off the session on the waggler because really the action hasn't exactly been fast and furious on this. Another nice little stamp roach though. So again, it just goes to show that it's well worth having one of these set up, but because like I said, we've been piling in the bait, well I wouldn't say piling in the bait, but keeping the bait going in nice and regular for the waggler line over the top, I think that's probably the best bet now that there's a bit more pace on the river to round off the session for the last half hour, so we'll swap over to that now. Right, so I've gone straight back onto Waggler after that stint on the link ledger and 
basically we're on the link we've had sort of three or four indications and nothing really to strike at. I've gone back on the wag around the bite straight away. Nice little roach. But what's evident as soon as I've chucked this out is the river's pretty much double the pace that it was at the start of the session. And I certainly think that's probably what switched them on. I think not only is it the fact that I'm able to present the bait better than I was, like I say, when we were rained off filming earlier, but equally the extra pace of the river just means the fish have to have the bait a bit more. They don't get quite as, as long to sort of inspect it, if you like. So I think, like I say, that combined with the fact I'm able to present the bait properly now. It's looking good for the last sort of hour or so of the session. Now, I don't think we'll have achieved a big weight today. Not even close, but as I said earlier, when it comes down to these practice sessions, you're just here to learn a few things. And I've picked up 101 things today about how I should be fishing the river if it's like this when the match crops up. So the main things being where I was fishing in the peg, I should have started feed, fishing much further downstream, assuming the wind had have picked up. Again, I think the stick float line on a different day might come into it, but today it's produced only about two ounces of fish, that being one perch. Everything else I've caught on the, the, uh, the waggler and the link. But it certainly seems to be fishing a bit better now that the, the river's picked up a bit of pace. I'm just watching that right down the peg now because it's obviously picked up. I, I think the bait will be being spread out a little bit more, which again, I think that, that sort of coaxes the fish into feeding a bit more aggressively. They've got to move around more to find food items. So I think if it's this pace on the day, on these pegs, they might do quite well. I'll run that right down to the sort of the extremity of the peg until I think that there can't be any food down there. I'm just going to bring it back in and recast. Again, one thing that's surprising, I'd have thought there'd been a few more perch to be caught today, but again, that might be with the colour in the water. Perch don't tend to, they tend to prefer a clearer river than anything. So that might be one of the reasons. Just going to try running this one through a bit closer in this time. So sort of rather than over the back of the feed, sort of through the middle of it, if, if that makes a bit more sense. Just see if there's any bites to be had there. Again, wherever I can, I prefer to fish just past the feed, because I do, I do subscribe to the, the idea that on rivers especially, they do tend to sit further past your feed, or the quality fish do. I'll try a couple of casts where I'm just running through pretty much right over the top of the main bulk of the feed. I'll see if there's a few fish there. seen a small fish top behind the float as well which is probably the second fish I've seen rise today so again it might be a case of they're coming up in the water as well as uh, as evening draws in a little bit that's a bite there right so there we go we're into another fish now and I think what we'll probably do is call this the last fish it's not a big one, but the last hour it's been quite apparent that the fishing's become really difficult and they've been dead cagey. Well, that's a nice little, tiny little roach to finish on. Smallest fish of the day by a mile, but again, the immaculate condition. It shows that the cold has really come back with a bit of a, a nice resurgence, being that we've caught quite a few different age groups of these fish. Again, probably half an ounce that one, but we'll get him popped in the net, and then we'll have a look at what we've caught further up the banking. 
Right, so as you can see there, we've put, put the fish down on this nice soft grass here, and that's what we've ended up with, probably about three pound of the course fish, and we've had two trout that have probably gone two, two and a half pounds, so over the course of what, five hours that we've fished, they've probably had five or, five or so pounds, so not a bad, bad net of fish. As you can see, mainly roach in there, but we've equally had a nice little chub, which was a, a pleasant surprise, put a good, a good scrap, and that'd be the best roach of the day. Um, again, it's just been a nice little practice session. It's been a couple of perch caught as well. Um, nothing of any size, I think that being the biggest, probably about three ounces. But really pristine conditioned fish, and like I say, crucially today, we've come down here and learned quite a lot. Not caught as much as we probably could have, but learned plenty of things. So it's been a well worthwhile session today. As I say, I think I'm happy with this section now, I'd fish it in the match. So hopefully as well for yourselves watching at home, there's one or two tips that we've covered today in terms of waggler and link fishing. Um, that might help you on your local river. Again, unfortunately, the stick hasn't worked, but on a different day, that might have been another result. But as you can see there, we'll get these fish back now. A cracking day's fishing, and always from last cast, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on that next episode.